It's spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. The KITV Network is available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Cross TV, the KITV Network, Roku TV, Android TV, HSBN TV, Google Chromecast, and Samsung Smart TV, plus their podcasts spreading the love. The Lord's Word taught in so many forms to so many people through talk shows, Bible teaching, gospel music, church services, and youth programs, and so much more available to you. The KITV Network, from faith to faith and glory to glory. For more information, contact us at info at KITVnetwork.com or learn more at KITV Network. Network.com. How many know that you have a destiny in him, in Jesus Christ? And so we're going to talk about stepping into your God-given destiny today. I want to talk about uh, this message this morning is brought to you by the letter F. How many, how many ever watched Sesame Street before? And uh, so it's brought to you by the letter F. I know, I know you've wanted to use that word for a long time, so I'm just, I'm just going to bring it to you this morning. I want to talk about stepping into your God-given destiny. We're going to talk about seven things. First thing I want to talk about this morning is freedom. I love when God sets it up because the first thing Joey said when he got up here was, Lord, let there be freedom in this place. And I said, thank you, Holy Ghost. You're already on it. And how many know that freedom is important? Because we can't move forward if we don't have freedom. So many people today are bound in where they are. A lot of believers or so-called Christ followers are bound and so they can't move forward because they have things that hold them back. And I love what it says in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. So Christ has really set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Make sure that you stay free. How many people have ever had an experience before you've uh, since God set you free but then you go right back into that same addiction or same habit? Probably many of us in this room. And the Bible tells us that not only are we to get free, but we're to stay free. Come on, in Jesus' name. And we need to make sure he who the Son sets free is what? Free. free indeed. And so we need to make sure that once we get free, we stay free. And we say, well, how do we do that? Well, we need to make sure that we stay in the Word of God. There's different ways that you can get free. Look what the Scripture says, Luke 13 12, the story of Jesus. He said, when Jesus saw the woman, he called to her and said, Woman, you are set free of your infirmity. That word freedom there means losing the right to be free. It was like, it was like she didn't know what to do, but suddenly she was just free. She was loose right there. How many have ever needed healing or needed deliverance before and, and like boom, it just happened? Anybody? Lift your hands so I can see you. I can't read minds. I can... I can see hands. So everybody shout freedom. freedom. And we need to move to that. So how do we get free? You see, us as ministers, we're specialists saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, but we don't tell you how to do it. So today I'm going to tell you how you do it. How do you get free? First of all, you need to pray. We heard it this morning. You've heard, the story, you've heard it said before, you need to pray just to make it through the day. You, you need to make sure you pray. David said early in the morning, Will I seek you, O Lord? And he made sure that he brought a prayer. Number two is we need to get into the Word. How many know we, we get into the Word, the Word gets into us? Do you know in most churches, they say over 85% don't know as many scriptures as they are in their age. And we need to make sure that we're people of the Word. What does it say? Psalms tells us, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not... So why do we struggle with sin? Because many times we don't know what the Word says about our situation. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching so good now. But we need to be people of the Word. 
You see, as Pentecostal people, we, we know the Spirit. We love when the Spirit gets a moving. And we love, we love our worship. But do we love the Word as much? Jesus said he even exalts the Word even above his name. So we need to be people of the Word. Next thing, how do we get free? We need to get involved in the ministry. If you're part of this house, you need to jump in and say, Pastors, how can I serve the vision? Don't just sit back because there's something that happens when you mean help other people. You know, Anthony, when the, I remember I was sitting in a meeting one time at a pastor's conference and the pastor said, if you're ever struggling and having a hard time, go out and find somebody that needs help more than you do and you'll get healed real quick. And it's never left me because I know that if I'm struggling and having an off day and saying, oh, well, this is happening and this is happening. How many know there's always have somebody having a worse day than you are? Come on. But the way to change that is if you're having a tough time, go find somebody that needs help and help them. Get involved in ministry. Get involved in people's lives. Amen? Number, number four, how do we get free? We need to share our faith. There's so many believers that are afraid to share their faith. They're like, oh, well, that's not my gift. I'm not an evangelist. No, but you need to know that the Word tells us that we're all to do the work of an evangelist, which means we need to share our faith in Jesus Christ. And how many knows that when you share, that people listen? See, they say, well, people don't listen to me, people don't listen to me. Listen, you have something that they need. You have something that people want, you just don't know they want it yet. So I encourage you, open your mouth and share your faith. Number five, keep the pressure on. Just keep pursuing God. Keep going after it. Whatever you need in freedom, you keep pursuing that thing. Do you know that the proof of the desire is in the pursuit? If you, if you really want something, you'll pursue it and go after it with everything in you. If you really want it. People say, oh, well, I don't really want to do that. Well, if you really wanted to do it, you'd go after it. If you really wanted to be a musician, you'd practice and really work on honing your skills so that you could be a better musician. And how many know that God wants you as a believer to be the best in everything you do? Uh, why, why should the world be better than us? Come on, somebody. We're, we're his kids. We have the very best things. I mean, I mean, we, we say, oh, well, we can't do what the world's doing. We're not supposed to do that. Just live your life for him and watch how God can use you in a mighty way. Everybody shout freedom. freedom. Remember Braveheart when he yelled, freedom, you know, and, and all the churches were preaching that and they just thought it was wonderful. But where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now, where is the spirit of the Lord? Hopefully he's living inside of you. Romans 12 says we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so hopefully the Spirit of the Lord lives inside of us, and therefore if he lives inside of us, then we should be able to walk free. Amen? Amen. Number two is this, faith. Faith is a confidence assurance that something we want is going to happen. The certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we can't see it up ahead. It's interesting because sometimes the world has more faith than the church. Remember, even years ago, George Michael, you got to have faith. Dun, 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 dun. The world was singing about it, and we were still looking for it. But I'll tell you, the key for everything you do is to live in faith. God loves faith. North America loves comfort we have our comfortable little churches we sit there we have everything we need but we because we have that we don't need god i come from the most prosperous city in canada calgary and you know what we don't need god in my city because we have all the toys that we want we have a cabin we have a boat we have we have six jobs we have eight companies we have all these things and you know what there's nothing wrong with having things as long as things don't have you Come on, in Jesus' name. Because God, God wants to abundantly bless you, 
But at the same time, he wants your heart more than anything. And so we got to have faith. 1 Timothy 6, 12. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called, which you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is a realization of what is hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 1 John 5, 4. And whoever is begotten by conquers the world, by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. You see, faith says, I shall have it. You shall have whatever it is you're believing for, you shall have it. And a lot of believers say, oh, well, I'm just believing God to answer this prayer. But you know they don't even believe. The Word of God tells us in the book of Mark, it says, believing in prayer. And a lot of people pray, but they don't believe because they don't have faith. They don't put their faith in action, and therefore they don't see results. Everything you do in life takes a step of faith. And so you need to make sure that you're going to allow faith to arise. How many need a healing in your body this morning in this place? Many. Just let faith arise and watch things happen. How many need a financial miracle in your house today, in your life? And just let faith arise and watch things happen. You see, I can't do it for it. Nobody can do it for you, but God can do it for you. And when you have faith and you activate your faith, I like to say, we move, he moves. We step out, and God follows every time. But he requires us to step out. See, some of you aren't getting to where you need to go to the other side because you haven't stepped out of the boat yet. And I feel the Lord say today, it's time to step out on the boat. It's time to start walking on the water. You need to be a water walker and not be one that just sticks in the boat. It was funny because you remember the story when they were, they were there with Jesus in the midst of the storm. And it said, they went down and got him, but they didn't want to bother him. And it even says in the story, it says in, in one version of the word of God, it says that he had a, he had a cushion, but it was a leather cushion. You say, oh, I can't believe Jesus had such good things. They were afraid to bother him. But I want you to know that there's good things if you'll step out of faith. And you're never a bother to him. God loves faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So why don't you activate your faith? You see, I don't need to tell you, Brian, that you need more faith this morning. You need to activate the faith that's inside of you and step into what God truly has for you. You don't need more anointing. You don't need more faith. You don't need any more stuff. You need to use what God's already put inside of you and step out in faith. Oh, come on, that's good preaching, Pastor. Come on, in Jesus' name. Listen, listen you need to step, because if you walk out in faith, then you're going to step into what God truly has for you towards your destiny. Amen? Somebody shout faith. <laughs> Number three is this. Is this helping anybody yet? Is this getting in? Number three, you have to have focus. You have to have vision. Vision is a picture in your mind's eye of the way things could be or should be in the days ahead. Cheers didn't happen overnight. It was some men of God that got a vision. It was some men of God that saw something that nobody else saw. And Proverbs 29, 18, when people don't accept divine guidance, they run wild, but whoever obeys the law is happy. Or when people... For lack of vision, people perish, it says in another version. And so there's something about vision that attracts people. I like Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3. It's one of my favorite verses. It says this. That when we get something, it says, write down the revelation. It says, run with the vision. Here it is. Then the Lord answered me and said, write down the vision clearly upon tablets so that we can re read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. So I see so many people giving up right before the breakthrough because they lose heart. But if God gives you a vision, the Word of God tells us that it will happen. Somebody shout, it will happen. See, and I'm here to speak into you today in Jesus' name that what the Lord said to you 
has got to come to pass in Jesus' name. What the Lord said to you, it really is true in Jesus' name. He is not a, God, he is not a man that he should lie. When God speaks and says you're healed, you need to receive it by faith in Jesus' name. When God says, listen, I'm going to do this for you, you need to take hold in Jesus' name, and you need to say, I thank you that greater is Jesus in me than the enemy will ever be in Jesus' name. Come on. You need, you need to take hold of that which is taking hold of you. And you know what's crazy about some faith people? Is they can believe for everybody else, but they can't believe for themselves. Oh, you've never been there before, have you? Oh, I, and I'll pray for people, and I'll see them get healed all over the place. And then I can't even heal myself of a cold. It's like, prophet, heal thyself. You know, it's like, where is my faith? No, I got, I got to keep my faith levels high. How do you do that? Find other people of faith and let it rub off on you. It's called impartation is a fancy word. But get up against them and rub against them and watch that faith come on to you. Get around people that have faith. Listen, if you're struggling and you're believing God for a breakthrough, don't go around negative people. I hear people, well, they're believing God. They need to be healed from cancer. And people are saying, Oh, well, it's God's will that you're sick. Listen, no. Find people that are going to say, listen, I believe you're healed in Jesus' name. We're standing with you. We're going to fight this thing through. And on the other side, we will see the victory. We're going to see great healing happen in Jesus' name. There's so many, so many believers that don't even have faith. Yet the world believes it, and they see miracles, and they, they say, well, I'm just thankful to Jesus Christ for doing this in my life. So how do you know you have a bigger vision from God? It's got to be bigger than your natural abilities. If God speaks something to you and you know that you can't do it on your own, you'll know it's of God. Write down the vision, make it plain, and run with the vision. Everybody shout focus. So the first one was what? Freedom. Freedom. Second one was faith. Third one, focus. Number four is this, favor. If you're going to step towards your God-given destiny, then you need to understand that the favor of God goes before you. Oh, glory be to God. I'm preaching better than you're shouting today. But favor of God. Do you know that favor is one of my best friends? I declare every day that I walk in divine favor. I declare every day that I'm blessed and highly favored, just like Mary cried out. I am blessed and highly favored. And look what the scripture says about favor, because there are many things it says. Let's look at it together here. Favor is this, an act that is kindly or helpful beyond what is due. Psalm 90, verse 17, may the favor of the Lord our God be ours. Does that include you and me? Yes, it does. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper the work of our hands. And uh, let's move on. Luke Luke chapter 1, 28. Gabriel appeared to her, speaking to Mary, and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Look at Proverbs 8, 35. For he who finds me finds life and wins favor from the Lord. Luke 4, 19 says, At just the right time I heard you on the day of salvation. I helped you. Indeed, God is ready to help you, or sorry, and proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. And 2 Corinthians 6, 2, another scripture there. But we need to understand that the favor of God is on us. You don't believe me? Turn to Psalm chapter 30. Psalm chapter 30, verse 5 says this. That his anger lasts for a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. Oh, how many are glad for that today? It also tells us in the psalm that his favor surrounds us like a shield. You see, you need to understand that the favor of God is released through your life. See, I travel a lot, and so people think because I'm a big guy, I get special treatment. Well, that's not the case. I, I get special treatment because I have the favor of God on me. One year when I was traveling, I was upgraded 11 times to business class on flying without even asking for one upgrade. And they just don't do that because you're a big guy. They're like, well, listen, you paid that much, like back of the bus guy. But... So when I travel, I have an incredible amount of favor. I was just in Malaysia last week. I show up at the hotel. Oh, Mr. Gill, we're not going to put you in a regular room. We're going to put you in a, in a suite, and we're going to 
give you the club floor and you'll have access to the lounge and all that. And I'm like, yes, that's a favor of God. Glory be to God. Come on, somebody. How many know the Lord loves to bless his kids? So you need to declare favor every day. You need to declare favor over this city in Jesus' name. That Penticton shall be saved in Jesus' name. That you shall see things happen in this city that nobody believed you could even see. Oh, hallelujah. And you need to step in divine favor. See, people say, uh, my friend Mark Griffin, he's been here before. He gives you greetings this morning. And, and uh, he says, you know, I don't even know who walks in favor like more than you and me. And I said, that's right, because we just believe that it can happen. So when we step in to walking in our destiny, we understand that the favor of God follows us and the favor of God surrounds us everywhere we go. Somebody shout, favor ain't fair. CP, oh, you don't even believe that this morning. See, some of you can't handle it because you don't want to get blessed because you're, you're afraid if you get blessed and people might think this. Listen, walk in the blessing of God. Listen, favor ain't fair. People say, well, how come you get it and I don't? I say, favor ain't fair. I don't know. I just know that I walk in it. Come on. Well, I'm, I'm preaching my best. <laughs> favor ain't fair. Just know that today. I put, I put on my Facebook one time. I put on, I'm God's favorite. Oh, my God, you should have saw the post coming in. <laughs> well, God doesn't, God doesn't treat everybody. Tr God treats everybody the same. I said, nope, I'm God's favorite. <laughs> Why? Because I'm his child. Listen, everybody shout, I'm God's favorite. <laughs> Listen, if you understand that, then you walk in a whole new level. You don't walk the way the world looks at you. You don't walk even the way other believers look at you. Because I dare you, you just go home and put, I'm God's favorite, and just watch things break out. Come on. I walk around the house saying, I thank you, Lord, that I'm blessed and highly favored. I thank you, Lord, that I am your favorite. I thank you, Lord, that we're blessed in everything we do. Listen, I don't know why. I just know I am. Because I know whose I am, and I know who I am in him. Oh, my. Come on, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number five is fire. We sang it this morning. Set a fire down in my soul. Fire. You know the word of God is fire? Jeremiah 23, 29. It's not my word like fire, says the Lord. Like a hammer shattering rocks or like a fire shut up in my bones. Then there's the refiner's fire, which we don't like to talk about. Because it hurts too much. I was going through a hard time a few years ago at a specific moment. And, you know, I'm, I'm just feeling I'm on the urge of breakthrough. Then someone comes up to me, Dennis, gives me a word. Oh, by the way, you're still in the refiner's fire, and he's just got so much more for you. <laughs> and I was like, really? But the refiner's fire, when he comes and it says in Revelation that he'll refine us as gold. And we don't like it because it hurts. But it's necessary to get us to the next level. It's necessary to get us where God wants us to go. And so we need to make sure that we let the refiner come and refine us. And it's, it's painful. We sing it for years. Refiner's fire, my heart's one desire is to be holy. We all sing it, but do we believe it in our heart? Do we really want it? The refiner's fire is painful. We'd rather have something that feels better. Come on. But then, but then this is the one we all like. It's Pentecostal. It's the next one, the Holy Ghost in fire. We'd rather have that than the refiner's fire. But I've learned that you've got to have the one to get to the other. <laughs> because when you get to this, it said Jesus himself went into the desert. And when he came out, he was more anointed than ever. So the word of the Lord to you today is no matter what you're going through, you're going through in Jesus' name. You're coming out the other side. You're coming out stronger. You're coming out greater. You're coming out more, more anointing than ever. People are going to look at you and say, how would you ever make it through that circumstance? You're going to say, just him. 
the refiner's fire. See, many years ago, approximately seven years ago, I went through refiner's fire in my own life. I had ministered for many years, ministered almost 25 years now this coming spring. And at 14 years into my marriage, I came home from a mission trip in Ukraine, and my wife said our marriage is over. I said, what are you talking about? we got four little girls. Um, how can this be? We were pastoring a church that we planted. We're seven years into it. It was about this many people. Things were happening. People were getting saved. People were getting touched by the Spirit of God. We were impacting nations, sending out missions. We were doing all the stuff. And I don't share this everywhere, but I feel, I feel safe to hear. I feel this is a place I can be honest with. And for six years, we were part, and I prayed and I cried out. I said, Lord, ministry's over. My family's over. Everything I had that was precious to me has been taken. And I said, but God, you've got to have a plan somewhere in this. Lord, I've, I've impacted so many lives. So many people are going to be impacted because of this happening to me. It reminded me, just keep loving, keep serving, keep ministering, and keep doing what I've called you to do. I'm like, well, what church is going to have me in? They're not going to have me in. I'm separated. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm a mess. They're not going to have me in. And a man of God looked at me one day, and he said, I had shut the church down that we were pastoring after seven and a half years. He said, what are you going to do now? I said, I don't know. Probably ministry is over. He looked at me, and he said, you need to go on the road and begin to travel. I've always traveled and pastored, but he said, you need to do it full time. I said, listen, nobody's going to have me in. He said, you just watch. Went home that day very discouraged. Next day the phone rang. A friend of mine saying, I'd like to have you in. Then another call came. Then another call came. Seven and a half years later, here I am, traveling all over the world, God opening doors that I could have never opened myself. Somebody needs to hear this today. Because the refiner's fire came into me. And he worked and refined some things in my life. But has now brought great victory because I was remarried last August to a wonderful woman I've known for 20 years, actually. It's a long story, but so between us, we have seven daughters. I mean, she has grandbabies and all that, and I'm like, my youngest kid's like nine. Like, how can I be dealing with grandbaby? you know? But in the midst of my tough time, God said, I can still use you. God said, I'm still going to raise you up and I'm going to do things through you. When you thought it was done to you, I'm going to do things through you. We trust that this broadcast has been a blessing to you today. And if you want to stay in touch with us and find out what's happening here at Ever Increasing Ministries, we encourage you to go to our website, www.myeim.org, and you can follow us there. Also follow us on Facebook at Ever Increasing Ministries. If you feel like you'd like to be a partner financially with us today, you can also go to our website, www w.myeim.org and give on the give online section there of the website. Thank you for tuning in today. We'll see you next time and we trust that God will continue to ignite you with the fire of his Holy Spirit.